Well, guess what time it is, Joe? It is basketball season. It's basketball season. Just like that, uh, it is basketball. <laughs> uh, should we talk a little bit about what we got going on tonight? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, Candle Genius here. There's, I mean, there's no one watching, but you might be watching later. And Candle Genius here with Not Your Average Joe. Had a little bit of help tonight, by the way. Uh, setting up with Zach of All Trades going to help us get going here. So thank you, Zachary Ekwall, for helping us get going. And we do have some viewers out there. Uh, we are trying some new things. We've got a new scoreboard you might see here. Got a shot clock down there. It's got a game clock down there. I'm not sure what's going on with periods. In We're going to learn a few <laughs> things, but um, we'll learn as we go. As a matter of fact, you know what? I can change the away as soon as we know who's who. So the Riceville Wildcats are listed as the home team in this one. So we got Riceville versus Rockford here. These are two quarter scrimmages. So it's a half, basically, of basketball for each team. There are six teams here tonight. The Saints will tip off about 7 o'clock versus clearing both of these guys. Both of these teams are flying up and down the court to start. Johnny Adams, number 10 for Riceville, is hot. I think he's got five of the eight. For the Wildcats. I'm uh, one set of fingers here too short, so I'm missing a little bit of the action here. I apologize as we get these team names put in. We got Riceville at home, right? Riceville is the home team. Oops. Riceville leads 8 2 here early. And away is Rockford. Juniors, that's what their roster consists of. They don't have that updated yet, so uh, we're, we're going off of uh, what, the numbers that are in bounds tonight. Rice is going to be very young, uh, with what I believe is just two seniors on the team. Off the backboard, that'll be going the other way. It'll be Rockford ball here with Rice will lead Nate, too. Testing that inbound pass, going to get the steal on that inbound. Well, 15 looks to pass there. He was going to make a really nice pass. Adams was going to the hoop for the rebound. Good job with your names, Joe. <laughs> yeah, this will be this will be a good little test as we kind of try to try to use this. Of course, it'll be easier when half the quarter are you know names we're familiar with. No, I know. Versus tonight. Uh, we only have half an inch for most of the time. And we got a few guys without numbers out there as well, so we'll do them the best we can. Like I said, both teams are playing very aggressively, flying all over. They look look like they're ready to go. It's a three-game scrimmage tonight. Each game is scheduled for half hour again. If you're just joining us, we got Rockford versus Riceville. It's just a scrimmage here tonight. Uh, on the, the the home team on your board is Riceville. And uh, Rockford is the visiting team. Turnover on Rockford there. That could have gone either way. That's one of those. Is it a foul or a turnover? We decided it was a turnover. Called up travel. Rockford right, works the ball around. Kicks it out for another three. Just a touch long. Rockford is the rebound. Like I said, I don't have names or numbers for Rockford, so we will, we will go nameless for the Rockford Lord. Get a couple shots, get two good looks, but it does not fall. Rockford comes the other way with it. Ten is Johnny Adams. Stole it away, pass to him for the Warriors. Up the name. Bryce Looking for Adams down low there, tipped away. It'll be, it'll stay with Bryceville. It'll be Bryceville's ball here. Number one is Jack Adams. Five is Aiden Ebert. Let's see if our replay function is Yeah, let's get let's that, that a test. You know what I don't have for you? What's that? Uh, separate screen. Yeah, oh yeah. That's not, we'll have that too. Yeah, we'll have that you know, Like I said, tonight's kind of a big test for all involved. We go live for real next Tuesday. <laughs> nice shot there. I don't know who Mr. Pink uses, but that was a beautiful shot. For three. He's got nice shoes. Mr. Shoes. Pink I, Shoes. I like them. We're just going to give them all nicknames. <laughs> I'm kind of good at nicknames. That's kind of one of my jobs in the baseball field is to determine the nickname. And most of the time it only sticks to me. Nice steal there. That's 
Adams takes it all the way, lays it up and in. Riceville takes an 11-7 lead. Both teams climb move pressure here. Guard that guy. That is, uh, we, we got, we're learning about this technology <laughs> on the screen live as we go. I don't know if you've noticed, but down in the banner at the bottom when they score, it'll tell you uh, who scored and, and not the person but the team and the points. Specifically, it's the three yeah, pointer. I'm not sure if the two gotcha. are. Gotcha. It's just going to give juiced. us the threes. The threes are juiced. Got yeah. right, follow. Nice move there in the lane. Hits, hits every side of the rim and bounces out. But, it will stay with Rockford as it touches off right on the way out of bounds. So just what we saw in those first four or five minutes, number 10, Johnny Adams for the race for Wildcats. It looks like he's a shooter. Rockford works the ball around top of the key. Good defense by the Wildcats. Rockford's trying to set it up and run the offense here. We haven't seen a lot of running of the offenses here in the first quarter. They've both been running up and down the court. Trying to set it up here. Gonna have to take it back out. He does. He's jumping. He's good. 16 to 11. Looks a little like a scrimmage out here, mate. Doesn't it, Joe? It does. Uh, nice deal for Rockford. Lays it up and in. I remember him from last year, number two. I don't remember his name, but he was quick with the basketball. So you're looking at, you've got a list. I've got a list of this year's roster this off of bounds, and we've got names, but I don't have any numbers. I didn't put those in yet. And like I said, some of these scrimmage jerseys don't appear to have a number on the back anyway. Jumper just a little short. Rebounded by Riceville. Brought up here. By Ebert. Nice little move. Into the lane, gets the shot up and good. Anticipated that, Ebert did on the pass. Does a good job of breaking it up, gets it back. Plays it up. No good. And stolen away by Rockford. Again, the rebound brought down by Rice. Too many Adams. The shot's up there. That is number 15. Ryder Fair gets the three there. I didn't recognize Ryder without the baseball uniform. Right? <laughs> you know what's funny? Every sport kind of has its look. <laughs> they have it? their own look, don't they? Yep. <laughs> That's funny. I, I saw our Saints this week, football banker last week, and I was, uh, after looking at them all fall in, in football uniforms, it is interesting how. Uh, Small. Uh, some of them look like yeah, that's what you look like all fall. <laughs> uh, you forget that uh, there's a lot of padding on there. A lot of padding. That's a little too quick to see these boys losing weight from running up and down the basketball court, but it is a very different form of athleticism. Pabliska makes the shot and then gets a good defensive stop on the other end. Does a nice job of pressuring Rockford, causes the turnover, be right to the ball. One of the new rules this year we'll have to get used to is where they inbound the ball after a turnover in the front court is now different. There's four spots where they inbound the ball, so we'll see, see if that has any impact. impact. It's supposed to be easier for the officials outside of the game. Laid up and in by number two for Rockford. Again, that guy's quick. He gets the ball out front and he's gone. One of the other big changes, Eric, that we'll, we'll kind of have to pay attention to is this whole, is this a one-on-one -on -one or is it a two-shot foul? Where are we at? How many fouls? That's all changed. That's all different in high school basketball. For, really? For 23-24, there will now each team gets five fouls uh, in, before reaching the bonus, essentially. And then it, so there are no one-on-one -on -one fouls anymore oh. in high school basketball. Okay. It is straight, either just a common foul, and we play on with the foul, of course, issued, but then we play on. 
until you get to five, and then at five and beyond, in each quarter, you get two shots for every five. And then that resets at the quarter. Start over again in quarter number two. So that'll be the I major know. difference for our, you know, last year we introduced the shot clock. This yep. year, gonna gonna change the way fouls are counted and accounted for and, and shots. So that'll be something fun to watch and, and kind of get used to. So like the first four and a quarter are free. The fifth one creates two shot clock. Five per quarter. So, per quarter. so if we look at, you know, we're, we're talking about this, the scoreboard at the bottom right now, which uh, we're, we're using some technology that's reading it off of the scoreboard and then putting it digitally uh, in a very professional way here at the bottom. We're kind of watching, is this thing accurate? The score is presently 23 to 17. Shot clock is present while the quarter is coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Shot clock is off, should be about four seconds left on the clock. It'll be interesting to go back and look at, at that. Fair gets a shot up right at the buzzer. Bounces around, does not go in, and that'll end the first quarter with Riceville leading 26-19 over up. I believe this is a half of basketball, right? It's scheduled for about 30 minutes, so um, we're going to take a moment here. We're going to hit some, we didn't do any advertising before the game, so we're going to go ahead and uh, hit some ads, and uh, we'll be back here in just a moment. We got, I don't even know how much time we've got, so we'll be back. Enjoy. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Agent Brian Putney with offices in St. Ansgar and Stacyville, Iowa. At K2 Agronomy, we embrace a holistic approach to crop production, focusing on soil, seed, and plant health. K2 Agronomy, helping our customers to achieve the maximum return on their investment. <laughs> Let's do a lawn air production. Can I use my laptop hooked to this? and push it out to my laptop so I can switch between bound and the feed. Um, let's see. Do you have your laptop yeah, with you? I do. Okay. Well, so so USB out. Game two. Yep. If you read that as an incoming camera, then you're just opening up. I think that's pretty good. That's right. Well, between, between games, you might try right. something. All right. right. So we're into a half of this is over already. It's my understanding. We're going to play two, two eight-minute quarters here, or about a half hour. And I think at any point, they can call the dogs off and quit. But. Uh, it looks like uh, this one's going to go well. We're getting a bunch of basketball in early, getting a bunch of guys rotated in. Uh, going get, to get the young man for a travel there. He'll turn it over, and it'll be Riceville ball. Leading 26-19, start of the second quarter. Point guard, that's number five. This is Ryder Fair, number 15. I think that's his... I think he's made two out of the last three shots. He's getting warmed up from deep. Looks like that's his special. Really nice play there on the defensive end by Kaliska. Gets the turnover, but the Wildcats turn it right back over to Rockford. Who's going to bring it up? What are we going to call it? Looks like we've got foul, blocking foul on the Wildcats. Got a couple of those tonight. Those 50 50. Is that a block? Is that a travel? That one was a block. They're actually playing offensive. They're offensive. They're offensive. <laughs> they're, 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 yeah, they're defensive in how they're uh, really attacking the ball. I think you combined aggressive and defense together and came up with. <laughs> I must have. Yeah, I think that's because you're right. They're playing very aggressively on defense. That's kind of their MO. They aren't going to back down and, and they, uh, they use it to their advantage. Playing hard tonight. They look good to start the season. Everybody officially gets underway next week. We stayed out of these scrimmages a few years ago. A lot of sports, and it's, been, it's a great way to get kids some game-like action before the games count. Everybody into that feeling of what's game day like, what's that mode look like. So St. Anthony has hosted this event at least the last several years for the boys. The girls had a scrimmage last week. The girls and boys seasons are offset by a week, so the girls actually start practice a week earlier than the boys do, and then of course their state tournaments a week earlier as well. So Riceville looks to set up the offense here. Coach is, is imploring his guys to run the offense here. So Ebert has the ball at the top of the key, looks to start that offense over to Fair. 
Back to Ebert, nice pass inside to Kavriska. Who's fouled? Just the first foul of the quarter. So that'll be just again a common foul ball out here and away we go. Bryce will look to set up the offense. Some subs coming in for Rockford. These scrimmages are good for referees too. I know I hear from, from some of them that, that enjoy doing this. Gives them a chance to, to switch from most of them do football also. So you kind of switch from football to basketball mode. Good for everybody. Nice pass, nice look there, an easy bucket. For Jack Adams. I enjoy watching the NFL on Sundays, and I can tell you preseason is very much preseason for the production crew, the camera crew, like <laughs> you bet. the missed camera angles and things like that that happen in preseason that don't happen in the regular season. Everybody, everybody needs this. Yep, absolutely. A little too quick for uh, the record point guard there, turns it over. Riceville brings it back up the court here, Liebert. Up to Ryder Ferry at the top. He shot a couple of threes tonight. Looked really good. Aggressive defense by Mr. Pink Shoes, and maybe just a touch too aggressive. They're going to get him foul there. So Ryder Ferry will take it out. I believe they call it the 28 foot mark. The 28 foot mark. I think that's something. Get inbound into the backcourt. Goes to Ebert. Ooh. Very nice job clearing out the defense there. Somebody followed where they weren't supposed to. And Bieber takes advantage, gets a nice easy bucket there. We get an offensive foul the other way. Number 10, Johnny Adams sets up beautifully under the hoop, takes the charge, and it'll be a turnover for Rockford. Right, so brings it back up again. Ebert's going to look to run the offense. Here. Same play as last time. They're using the same works. Just going the other way. We went right to the left. Hands it off to Ryder Fair, who takes the three. Just long. And a rebound kick to Rockford. Pass there. Over to the left wing. He's going to shoot the three. No good. Short. Right, still rebound. Johnny Adams with the ball. Job of passing it off to Jack. Back to Johnny. Got him in the corner, but he did a nice job of getting out of there. Bobliska with the short jumper. No good. Rebounded by Rockford. Oh, Rockford looks to get into their offensive set here. Get something going offensively has been tough in the second quarter. Mr. Pink shoots with the three ball. Just misses. Rebounded by the Wildcats. Jack Adams gets the shot up and is fouled. Shot's no good, but he'll get to going to the charity stripe here for the first time tonight for either team. We haven't seen any free, 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 free throws tonight. I don't believe we have. I think this is the, our first opportunity for a shooting foul. So with that, for those who have just joined us, you've mentioned that there are some changes here to how free throws are being handled in high school uh, varsity athletics. Uh, let's go over that again, Joe. Yep, sure. So essentially think of it this way. The fifth foul, a uh, fifth team foul, creates a shooting foul, or creates a two-shot foul. So there is no more one-on-one. -on -one. There is no more bonus, double bonus. Uh, I guess there sort of is. It's once once you get four, the four fouls are free. Your first four common fouls in each quarter do not non-shooting fouls. So just a regular common foul is does not generate a shot or uh, any free throws. Right. The fifth one, you automatically get two free throws for the fifth and beyond in each quarter. At the end of each quarter, that will reset. So this happens every quarter. Uh, we're on the fifth team foul that is now a shooting foul. So that, by my count, uh, is the fifth team foul. Yep. As we go here. So from here forward, there, there will be uh, two shots on each foul. That's an over and back. That's one of those running reasons they play these scrimmages, right, is to do stuff like that, is to kind of get that... Uh, those situations down of, oh yeah, that's right, I gotta remember, I can't do that. <laughs> so we see that, we see that action there. 
Riceville's played really, really well in the second quarter. They've kind of got their offense going. And running plays like that. Give and go. Look really good underneath. Rockford's going to live on fast break points, it appears. And they're really going to try to push the ball up the court in transition. That's that's what their strength has been tonight. Rebound there by Rockford. Nice pass. <laughs> yeah, pretty good defense there. Come flying in for the block. Just got a little bit too much on the way by. And that'll be a shooting foul. And Rockford will go to the line. Rule changes because we like I said we did shot clock last year. First free free throw was good by Rockford on that. We're going to score to 35, 24 Riceville ahead. Yep. So yeah, here we go. I found this. I wanted to kind of talk about just what it was. So in the past, it's been once you got to seven fouls, there was a one-on-one -on -one bonus. And then uh, once 10 fouls were committed in each half, so this was by half before okay, yep. uh, the seven and 10, right? At seven, yep. you got one and one, at 10, you got two. Now it's by quarter and it's five. Once you reach five, uh, you get two shots from that point forward and reset the quarter. So, so we'll that, watch that. That, that goes for a, a, a foul on the opposite side of the court. Non shoot, like you're gonna. It's any common foul. Yep, exactly. So, so anything, not, the, anything other than a technical. And of course, technical fouls carry their own, carry their own shots in. Anyway. Yep. So really, it's treated as a double bonus after, after four three. in any favor. Yeah, at five. At five fouls. Yep. So that'll make it. We can get that reporting here on this scoreboard that we've got going. That'll make things a little easier, too. So we can always know where each team is at on that. A couple minutes left in the scrimmage here between Riceville and Rockford. Both teams have made some substitutions with some different guys in. Give them a look. Timeout, Riceville. They got a nice rebound there underneath. I tell you what, the Wildcats have done a really good job on the boards, both offensively and defensively. All right, during this timeout, we're going to pause for a commercial break. We'll be right back. Focus Insurance Team's experienced agents understand the unique risks and needs of the agricultural community. They offer competitive rates and comprehensive coverage to protect your farm, equipment, crops, and livestock. Choose Focus Insurance for reliable service, market expertise, and peace of mind. At Johnson Oil, we're in business to be partners in your success. We got, we got, we got technical Travis out there. We got Duke Scoop out helping us nice. in the Duke Scoop is fair. Give us a Appreciate that, Travis. Keep it coming. We'll try to make Duke. some adjustments and we get the game too. What is the message? Maybe something I can work on. Main cam's a little glitchy Main cam. Okay. and slight lag. Inputs and how we'll, we'll, change the, we'll change the main cab. So we're gonna go to we're gonna change the main cab here. Cam here to a little wider view, different camera. I believe that's I three do. second violation. I do see the glitch on that. Thank you, Duke. Appreciate that. I see it. Now that he says it, I'm watching this, that screen. I see it also. Rocking with the rebound. Grace will thought about committing another foul underneath the hoop. 40 feet from scoring, but decided not to. Good rebound there. Throws it up to Jack Adams. Wild shots, no good, but rebounded. By Kaliska, who puts it up. Yeah. Shot's no good, rebounded. They're gonna hold it out here. Try to set up the offense. Rice four coaches in the floor and there, guys, to run the offense here. 
And here they go getting in that offensive set. Adams down with Kowalska. Gets it up and in. Nice pass, nice look. That's why the coach wants him to run the offense. <laughs> Good things happen uh, when you set it up. Good job passing it out of there by Rockford, passed it out of trouble. 41 puts it up. And gets the second one to go right at the buzzer. It counts. 39 28 Wildcats at the end of the second quarter, which I believe will be the end of the contest. I Except believe. Them up over there, so end that'll be of the contest. We'll do a little, we'll see if we get a little dribble here. Let's see. Let's see if you, no, I missed it. Shoot. No. Pretty good little dribble there. We'll highlight that. Uh, great game number one Rockford versus Riceville. Everybody got a few bugs worked out. I'll be ready to go for next week. I believe next we've got North Butler and New Hampton going to square off here. And then your Saints will take on Clarion Goldfield Dows at 7 o'clock. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pause for a commercial break here uh, while this game kind of gets. Game's not gonna get rolling. We're gonna get kids in here. We'll be back before the game starts rolling. Yeah, I think there's a so. there's a little over 15 minutes. I know there's a 15 minute clock in between where everybody gets loose, and that clock has not started yet. So okay. we'll just to, if you're out there in the YouTube land, you probably have 15 to 16 minutes before we start this thing. And that actually makes sense because uh, they're scheduled for six o'clock, six forty-five, yep. and seven. 30, and it looks like we're going to be very much on time. Yep, they just started the clock, so 15 minutes from now, we will, be, we will have game time officially. We'll be back right after this. For nearly 30 years, we have been a partner to the communities in Northeast Iowa, fulfilling the energy needs of our neighbors and friends. A good partner knows your business and understands your needs. Providing the highest level of service possible is our mission. Our customers count on us to reliably and safely deliver the fuel products they need to keep their productivity high whenever the need arises. We are continuously improving our capabilities by adding storage, improving the fleet, or utilizing new technology. We've put together a well-rounded team of specialists who welcome the opportunity to answer your questions and assist your plans. These efforts result in a better experience for our customers. At Johnson Oil, we're in business to be partners in your success. Whether for work or for play, having a driver's license is pure freedom. Saints Driving School offers year-round driver's education classes. Why would you wait? Call 641-420-3594 today. St. Ansgar State Bank has a strong commitment to farmers. We provide the highest level of service with quick turnaround time, competitive interest rates, flexible payment options, and the ability to work with you on any size loan. Our agricultural banking specialists are experienced in farming and understand the important role agriculture credit plays in your operation. Because of our ability to make local credit decisions, we respond quickly to your total agricultural financing needs. St. Ansgar State Bank, helping you meet your financial goals. As a family-owned business since 1922, we have a good feel for what it takes to be a strong and growing member of the local economy. Our hope is that our customers and employees have a warm and welcoming experience each and every time. We strive to communicate a clear vision and plan for individuals, our company, and our community's success. We work to ensure that the quality of all of our people, our products, and our services stand the test of time. If you would be a good fit for our company in a mechanical or managerial position, we would love to hear from you. Benefits include competitive pay, 401k, health, dental, and life insurance, 
flexible spending accounts, vacation, and holiday pay. Because we believe it's more than just a place to work. It's a place to call home. At Farmer State Bank, we have a proud tradition of commitment of excellence. Cut. Hey guys, what's all the big production about? We have a couple job openings that we're looking to fill, so we're making a commercial. Just tell them you're going to pay them well. We're really pretty easy to get along with most of the time, and there's plenty of room for advancement or whatever. At Farmer State Bank, we have a proud tradition of paying you, being pretty easy to get along with most of the time, and there's plenty of room for advancement or whatever. This broadcast is brought to you in part by St. Ansgar Chiropractic. Soy, wax, beads. The foundation of better candle making is built on cleaner burning soy-based candle wax. American Soy Organics, better wax for candle makers, by candle makers. Leaving your crops unprotected from droughts, floods, hailstorms, and pests can leave a farmer at serious risk of losing their equipment and their land, putting their family's future at risk. Beeland Ag Risk Services, your partner in crop insurance. Nah, man. It's not a broadcast. It's a broadversation. I was an occupational therapist for about 14 years and then I decided to join the business full time when we had about 11 employees and uh, developed the HR department. I got to sit down with people, get to know their stories, get to learn about their families and really get to know who they are. Through that process, we just got to hire the best people in the world and we really feel like we're blessed with the best. Broadcast is brought to you in part by Cobalt Realtors with service you can depend on and know how you can count on. St. Ansgar is a thriving community in North Central Iowa with a lot to offer. Founded in 1853 by a group of Norwegian immigrant farmers, St. Ansgar is a small town with culture, character, and charm. Known as the Garden Spot of Iowa, it is a wonderful place to grow your family or business. You might not expect all the wonderful amenities you'll find here. Within our shops, you'll find unique gifts, home decor, collectibles, and antiques. You'll also find restaurants, outdoor activities, and events. St. Ansgar is a great place to visit any time of the year. And we take pride in our schools. Our youth are provided the highest quality education in a secure, positive, and challenging environment, empowering all students to reach their full potential. St. Ansgar welcomes visitors and newcomers with open arms and warm smiles. Come visit and see why so many people proudly call this area home.
There you go. We're live. Look at that scoreboard widget at the bottom. I think that's called a widget. Uh, it's a, we'll call it a widget. We're about four minutes from North Butler taking on New Hampton. I believe that would be Chickasaws versus the Bear Cats. If they follow the same pattern as they did last time, New Hampton would be the home team. But, yeah. Oh, obviously. Based on their seats? Based on their seats. Yeah, yeah. they follow the seating seat chart that we've laid out very nicely. Basketball season is underway. Well, we are 30 minutes in, another 30 minutes of like, New Hampton versus North Butler, and then there'll be your St. Asper Saints versus very good Let's be bold on this one, Joe. So you think the home team will be who? I think the home team will be New Hampton. New Hampton. Okay, we're going to go with that. And you feel the away team in this case. It appears we're giving the home team status to the either red or white team. I think that's the best. Ah, <laughs> all right, good. Well, we may need to change this depending on what happens in the scoreboard here. So if you're just joining us, North Butler versus New Hampton is coming up. And uh, we've got a pretty fancy little, little widget here. It's basically, it's reading the numbers on the scoreboard. And from that, it's generating this uh, pretty fancy little scoreboard that we have down at the bottom here. Uh, it's not entirely accurate, as you can tell. The shot clock is not actually 36 seconds. It's actually 35. <laughs> so as it's reading it, and we have a weird angle, it's going to maybe make some little mistakes here and there. And hopefully it's it's, it's not troublesome. So I think the last game did a pretty good job of following the score, from what I can tell. Yeah. Part of why we want to do this, right, is we're trying to get our hands around how's our technology going to work. Get, get a little practice session, just like the boys are here scrimmage wise. We're going to kind of scrimmage with the video. You got it. Preseason for us too. We're allowed that. You're allowed that, Joe. Just getting, just getting ready to go here. It, uh, I'm trying to figure out. We do have names and numbers this time, so Give him a nick. We'll come up. So you see? Oh, I see number three. The three Wait. zero with the white underneath is. Oh, I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh yeah. This guy. So on their own. We should know who this is just from watching them play. Last year. He's a baller. We know that. Number three here. Same. So a lot of him last year. What's his name? Number three. No. Number three. Like we did the running back from uh, East Buchanan, and we're wrong. We're saying it confidently wrong. That's all that matters. <laughs> and I felt better. Well, I watched the state broadcast. And they got it wrong for about a quarter and a half. Oh, did they? Yeah. They, those guys need to know. They need to know. <laughs> They're getting paid, man. They're getting paid. They're getting paid to know. <laughs> the names are the hardest part of this gig. Oh, man. my no goodness. Doubt. That's a fact. That is a fact. One of the play the football playoff teams, we, we had to get a pronunciation guide for the town itself. So I mean, we've seen it all this, this season already, and it's just no bad. Uh, I gotta say, the fans were great at Sibley. Sibley will cheat in I'm sure you're talking about, right? Yeah, the fans were great over there. Yes, they were. In fact, I think we've got some Saints TV followers for Sibley to cheat. Speaking of subscribers, boy, it would really help us out if you could go down and subscribe to Saints TV here on YouTube. We get to a thousand subscribers, it changes things, right? It here. does yeah, really change really things. There's sports that we can't cover because we can't stream mobile. We gotta have the software and the computer and all that with us today. Uh, it'd be really cool to have a thousand subscribers and get ourselves to be able to stream anyhow, anyway, anywhere, and we could bring you way more Swing Saints TV. So if you know anybody who's watching and not subscribed, tell them to give a program. Your hand can get some tip. Gets it three right off the bat. That's Ben Gilbert for three to start the hot hand. And you were right, New Hampton is indeed. Oh, we got that right. Here's Boots. Pass it out to unnamed number 30. Over to Austin. Back down to 30. He lays it up just a little strong. And down with the rebound is Ben Gilbert. 
He brings it up to the chip side. Passes out, shot is up by Roush. No good, but the rebound's called in by Rochford. So Gilbert dribbles around, pass out to Brink. Into Rochford, who appears to be fouled. Yep, he got fouled there. I believe that's Carson Lewis who's going to get charged with foul number one. Duke Scoop, thank you for the heads up. If you can hear my keyboard, that means we're listening to my Mac. Appreciate it. Keep them coming. Keep, keep that coming. That Please do. Helps us get dialed in here. We got very limited screen space, so I got windows on windows on windows. And it's surely going to have an impact on here. And sure enough, we have the wrong set of mics. So this is going to change everything. Check this out. This changes and Everything. we're back. <laughs> How's that? Oh, my goodness. See, to us, we sound the same, but I know that if you've been listening to the last broadcast, uh, this is a very different situation. On the line and out of bounds, Austin did a nice job of saving it, but Till ended up on the line. That'll be a turnover for the Bearcats. The Chickasaws will bring it back up here. The ball has been in the New Hampton offensive side of the court for the entire beginning of this game. They've done a really nice job, and I tell you what, that number two Ben Gilbert has a pretty shot. That's his second made three-pointer and as many attempts, and it's 6-0 New Hampton to start. North Butler gets into their offensive set here. Down scramble for the ball. Going to get a foul on New Hampton, or excuse me, on North Butler there. That is, they're going to give that one to Brady Austin as well. His second foul in a minute and a half here to start this game. So New Hampton brings it back up here. It'll be Gilbert, the point guard. Brings it across center court. New Hampton's done a really nice job of moving the ball around. And they've got some three-point guys. There's another one. Great. Reed Roush for three, and that's good. A three for three on three pointers to start this scrimmage here in St. Ansgar tonight. North Butler works the ball inside. And it's turned over. That's Austin, who turned it over there for the Bearcats. Ewart brings the ball up the court. He tries to get a pass inside. It's knocked away by North Butler. And North Butler's seen enough. They would like a timeout. They want to talk about this one early on. While they take their timeout, let's take a moment to thank Farmer State Bank and Grand Millers for making all these home games free to attend for the students here in St. Ansgar. Thanks, FSB and Grand Millers, for your generous contributions. Speaking of contributions, uh, we use, we partner with uh, an app called Give Butter. And Give Butter is how you donate to Saints TV to help keep these streams totally free. So you see the little bug in the corner. Maybe you don't. I'm not sure. We're still figuring that out, too. But there's a, we'll put this up there later again, too, so you can see that. Uh, thank you for those who have generated, uh, who have donated generously to keep these streams free. New Hampton gets it into Rochford there. Over to Gilbert who's done a nice job of distributing the ball tonight early on. Tough pass inside, and it's picked off by North Butler. Who's going to bring it up? This Boo's handling the ball, does a nice job as a point guard for them. Back to the top of the key to Boo's. The shot is up. It is short, but rebounded by North Butler. That was Austin on the rebound. Back to Austin at the top of the key. He's going to pass it over to Booz. Down inside. Shot is up, and it's good. Excuse me. Oh, I gave it to him before it went <laughs> down. It, uh, North Butler gets the rebound, kicks it back out to number 30, who takes it up to the rack. He's fouled on his way, and that'll be two shots for Mystery Man number 30. Mr. Blue Shoes? I don't know. Oh, I got too many blue shoes, though. I got three guys with blue well, shoes, so we can't go with that. If they're not willing to wear numbers, Joe. Yep. First free throws on the way, and it's good. So that cracks the scoreboard for North Butler. They get on the board with a free throw. One more coming. That was 
New Hampton's first foul of the night. Again, the format here is two quarters for each set of teams. The second free throw is on the way and good. 9-2 Chickasaw's lead. Get back into their offensive set. Ooh, quick pass over. Wasn't quite ready for it. Off his hands and out of bounds. And that'll be a turnover for the Chickasaws. Joe, you're pretty good with names. You know these referees out here tonight? Uh, I do. We got Mel Schroeder on the, on the back side here. Uh, the guy under the basket I know, but I couldn't tell you his name. That's Brian Koob. That is, so you know that? You know the that's, one I don't that's know. That's the one that I knew. I was thinking together you and gotcha. I are going to get this figured out. Yeah, this is Brian Pierce on the near side <laughs> nearest us, pointing his arm towards the, the end line. That's Mr. Pierce himself. I know Mel does a lot of basketball. Uh, Brian Pierce, I believe, does mostly softball, football, and basketball. Do you know about Mr. Koob? Does he do Mr. multiple sports? Or yeah, he Mr. Koob, uh, basketball, I think, is kind of his kind primary of his deal. sport. Yeah. Yep. He's a graduate of Once Upon a Time North Central in Manly. Ah, okay. Uh, back when I was teaching. His father, Dick Koob. Dick, Dick, if you're watching, I'm not sure why you would be. I didn't really advertise that we're doing this tonight, but if Dick Koob happens to be watching, <laughs> Dick Koob uh, worked at North Central Manly and then worked for Milkhouse Candles for many, many years. Until after uh, 10 years of tremendous service to Milkhouse, he retired. Retired, all right. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have these three here tonight. I tell you what, the shortage of officials in Iowa is real. So if you're sitting out there and would like to get involved, reach out to somebody here at the school. I don't know if that's uh, Josh, maybe at the AD, with the AD position, but uh, they can get you involved. And we'd we'd love to have more officials here for all sports. I know it's a it's a real a real issue, and it's going to start to impact the ability to play games, which will be unfortunate. So, you know, I was talking we, with the AD Josh here this last week, Josh Culberson here at St. Ansgar. He referenced that because of the shortage, uh, it is well. I'm not sure if it's because of the shortage, but in either case, it's going to cost the school an extra six thousand dollars this year just for officials in for, official for games. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're that yeah. hard to get. They're and, that hard to get. So uh, They earn their money. There's no doubt about that. So if you're interested in becoming an official, there's so many resources out there right now. There's the good news is because of the shortage, there's a ton of people that are willing to help uh, and a ton of resources in terms of getting you certified, getting you gear. I know I've heard stories of on the baseball field of kids show up like, hey, yeah, the, well, some guy gave me all this gear just so I would ump, you know, and those are kind of cool stories yeah. uh, to hear. So there's lots of resources out there. If you're interested in becoming an official, please. Please do so. There's a lot of guys retiring out of it. Yep. I mean, just they put the time in, and it's time for someone else to go over. You bet. I understand that. And Back the to the – go ahead. Say, how do you do that, right? You start small. You start small. Go, go do some Little League if you're interested in baseball. Go do some, some kids' ball. Uh, find yourself comfortable. You're going to make the mistakes. If you're into listening to podcasts, the Ref Bros have a great one on Spotify. Uh, they talk very much about that. Yep. The and like you said, bros. there's a way to get involved in this without having to do a high school game your first time out, right? You got it. You <laughs> it's, got it. It's starting. They'll get you involved and work you in, and, and you'll be surprised, I think, how quickly you can get to that point where you can can do high school games and are doing that. And they're part of these these crews that travel around, and, and I do think it's – I understand – uh, being an official is not easy, but I do I do think it's fun if you have the right approach to it and and go in there with you have to have a bit of thick skin. I think that's there's no doubt about that. Whether you're a coach, a player, or an official, you got to have thick skin uh, to to participate in, in sports. Uh, but uh, you know, I think uh, if you can can do that, I, I do think it's something that a lot of officials tell me they they really enjoy it. That it is it is something they enjoy doing and being a part of it and and impacting kids and obviously the, the ability to play these games. So. That's my official speech for the year. Get involved. Well, it's a speech I'm sure you'll be making, and if we're doing our job, we're going to continue to make it. If we can have an influence and impact, if we can find ways, uh, we can find those resources to help encourage you. If you love the game, if you love watching, and you want to do more, man, we need officials. Yep. Amen. So the Chickasaws lead 9-5 here. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. They started on fire with three straight threes, and they've gone cold since. Nice rebound there. And back up and in, the shot's made by Woodson. 
Brinks with the rebound there. So the Bearcats will bring it back up. We've got a few new fresh faces in for New Hampton. This is Jax Thorne over to Booz. Nice short shot, good shot. And North Butler, after being down 9-0, has climbed back into this thing. It's 11-7. Shot is up, no good. Rebounded by North Butler, and we're going to get a foul called on New Hampton on the rebound. Good job under the hoop by Lewis there to get that rebound. Use that length. North Butler's always got a bunch of tall guys. This year appears to be no exception. <laughs> All right, so Duke, thank you for your feedback. I'm just trying to get my phone out here. I want to check these notes. Again, we're looking to improve this, make it as good as we can for you. Uh, I think the sound is better. I'm going to hope that's true. Lewis with the three, short, rebounded by New Hampton. It's a dangerous place to stop with the ball. Yes, it the is. <laughs> nice pass inside to Brinks, who lays it up and in for two. Booz runs the offense here from the top of the key. Back to Thorne. Who's fouled down low? Not a shooting foul. That is team foul number four. So each team has four fouls in this quarter now. Inbounded to Lewis. Thinks about a three, thinks better of it. Passes it off to Booz, who's going to set it up. Coach calls in a play. We're going to run an offensive set here. Thorn to the wing to Lewis. Top to Booz. Cut off nicely, good defensive play. But he works his way around it. That was a great shot. And that really nice little 10-footer goes, makes it 13-9. Well, North Butler's done a nice job of getting themselves back in this game. Three is up and short. Goes out of bounds. Ball will go to North Butler. Well, that was Rochford with the shot. For New Hampton. Lewis to Thorne. Back inside to Lewis. Pivots, gets the shot up, no good. Rebounded by Brinks. As time expires, oh, 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 wow. Reed Rausch, with I believe his second three-pointer of the quarter. So it's 16-9, New Hampton after one. New Hampton has 12 of their 16 points on three-pointers. Here is a look at that shot. That's a beauty. You can see the clock right as time is about to expire there. See the, the backboard turns red right as the ball goes through. <laughs> Beautiful shot. <laughs> well Great done, well shot. executed. Everybody's in the game, understands the situation, gets a pass off and gets the shot off. To make it 16-9, New Hampton over North Butler at the end of one. Very smart. Hey, we talked about uh, keeping the Saints TV stream free. Thanks for those who donated. By the way, uh, we've, we've set a goal of $10,000. And $10,000 helps pay for refs, helps pay for uniforms, helps pay for the equipment that we're using to keep this stream totally free to watch. Uh, we were told early on there's no way you'll do that. And as of today, earlier, look, we were at $7,500 uh, just from awesome. football season. So I, I think we're going to hit it. That is awesome. Um, thank Thanks you for, for all. Yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. Just uh, We couldn't do it without without the support. And clicking that button and making those donations makes a difference for the kids in our community. Sure does. Sure does. So we're heading into quarter number two, which is half number two. These are really? just, uh, yep. two quarter games with a score of 16 to 9. New Hampton leads North Butler. New Hampton inbounds here to Rochford. You can tell the coaches have talked to guys about, let's let's run these offensive sets. Let's see what we can get moving here. They do a nice job of moving the ball around. That's Carson Lewis on the foul. Just got a little aggressive there. Ended up getting nabbed for the reach. Remember the fouls reset at the quarter. So we're back to zero fouls. I think what we've seen so far, at least in this scrimmage, is there's going to be far less uh, shoot, 
a free throw shot in, in these games based on what we've seen in the first three quarters that we've watched. And perhaps that's just a scrimmage thing and that won't actually be true, but it'll be something we'll watch throughout the year. Nice pass inside, but it's a little too hot to handle. Well, it certainly speeds the game up, doesn't it? I mean, you're, you're talking about in a half. Yeah. It used to be seven, you'd go one and one. Seven, one and time. one, yep. Right, and so now in a half, you don't shoot anything eight. until? Until 10. Or essentially eight. 10. Yeah, well, essentially eight, 10. Eight, yep. 10. Yep. Right. It's, it's going to be all about timing, I suspect, right, is what we'll find out when there's yeah. four foot quick fouls to start a quarter. We'll think, man, this quarter took four. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's <laughs> so a good point. I think we're going to see it both ways, just a matter of, of there being quick fouls at the beginning of a quarter. I think we may have just cursed ourselves because I believe that is foul number three in this quarter. So I think just exactly what we're talking about may play out here in this, in this quarter where they're going to quickly go to the line. So it's Willidson, I believe, is how you say that name. Again, uh, excuse me, this is Brinks. Willidson is 15. 14 is Nick Brinks, a senior. Six foot one forward. Misses both free throws, but it's rebounded by New Hampton. A really nice job of Caden Roch for getting the rebound. Unfortunately, gets poked away, and in official rules, it rolls off of his shoe and out of bounds, so it'll be North Butler ball. A couple subs coming in for the Chickasaws. And we get set, go back to play here. Here's Booz bringing the ball up the court. Over to Lewis. Gets the ball inside to 23. Kicks it back up to Thorne. Now back inside. A little, little too much mouse. A little too much body inside uh, defensively. Those guys are banging down there. And Roush gets called for the foul. So we've got some members, his third. members of the Osage basketball team taking the opportunity to see some of these players play tonight. We've got some Osagians in the stands. Back. So North Butler looks to get on the scoreboard here in the second quarter. <laughs> good, good defensive play by Rochford. Just a little too aggressive in there. He's going to get called for the foul. I think Pierce thought maybe he was going to get get a piece of that one. Uh, and the officials, he maybe was going to get a body as that guy came flying over. <laughs> he was ducking, getting out of the way, which is probably pretty smart when you see that guy come flying at you. <laughs> North Butler inbounds here. Thorne with the ball. Thought about driving, thought better, but nice pass over to 10 in the lane. Who gathers it, passes it off 23, shot is up and it's good. 16 to 11, New Hampton. New Hampton leads with the ball here. It's Reed for three, I think that's the first three he's missed tonight, he's been red hot. That one's just a little right. Thorne brings it up. Doesn't, makes a nice move, gets into the lane, gets a good look, but it's blocked away by New Hampton. So it'll remain North Butler ball. Austin to inbound. 30 and 23, I don't have names for, so we're going with, with numbers for those two guys. As the rosters get updated as we get into real games, we'll have real names for you. We, we will have real names. <laughs> we're going to have real stats. Some real stats, the whole deal. And you just wait till you see what old Duke is working on. Yeah, we've got some really, <laughs> really cool stuff coming up for Sage TV uh, for this season. So you're going to want to tune in as we get all those things refined and, and put into use here for our broadcast. We'll talk a little about Media Day. Uh, when the Saints are playing, but uh, stay tuned for that. That was a lot of fun doing media day with these guys. <laughs> don't have any, even have any clips to share. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to. I don't want to get you too excited. But uh, your Duke, Duke is not here tonight because he's working on those pieces for us. But nice we're excited. pass, really nice pass inside. Gets the shot up, but kid does not go. And North Butler comes down with the rebound. Oh, just a little too excited there. <laughs> was going to make that pass. I'm not 
sure if that back foot moved, but somebody thought it did. One too many steps, and that'll be a turnover for North Butler. This game, which was very much New Hampton's game in the beginning. It was 9-0 really really at one point. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, was 12-2, I believe, at another. It is now 16-3. North Butler's clawed themselves right back into this game. The Bear Bearcats the last couple of years just really impressed me. They're in a good basketball team, and I know they're reloading a bit. They lost a bunch of, of scoring from last year, but looks like they're, they're right back on track to try to replace that. New Hampton works the offense over to the corner for a three. No good. Rebound by number 34, North Butler. Booz brings the ball up. Ooh. Quick, quick jump there by Wilson. Forces the turnover. Shots up, no good. And it'll be New Hampton ball under the basket here. But first, timeout, New Hampton. Looks like that's going to be a full timeout for New Hampton. Under five minutes to go here in this one. New Hampton leads 16-15 over the North Butler Bearcats. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Cobalt Realtors with service you can depend on and know how you can count on. St. Ansgar is a thriving community in North Central Iowa with a lot to offer. Founded in 1853 by a group of Norwegian immigrant farmers, St. Ansgar is a small town with culture, character, and charm. Known as the Garden Spot of Iowa, it is a wonderful place to grow your family or business. You might not expect all the wonderful amenities you'll find here. Within our shops, you'll find unique gifts, home decor, collectibles, and antiques. You'll also find restaurants, outdoor activities, and events. St. Ansgar is a great place to visit any time of the year. And we take pride in our schools. Our youth are provided the highest quality education. Back to the action here in St. Ansgar. New Hampton inbounds. That's McDonald. Not a new bro. Over to Gilbert, who takes the three, just short. Rims out and out of bounds to North Butler. Well, North Butler has a chance to take the lead in this game after being down nine nothing to start. And I gotta admit, I did not think that was gonna be a possibility the way this thing started. It sure looked like it was gonna be all New Hampton. Sure did. And North Butler's buckled down nicely and now they have a chance to get the lead here in this possession. Shot is up and good. Really nice runner in the lane for 30, and North Butler completes the comeback. Lead now, 17-16. Gilbert with the two. Strong, rebounded by number 30 for North Butler. Dorn brings the ball up the court. Done a nice job moving the ball around tonight. 30's feeling it. He drives again, but well defended. They plugged up the lane there. New Hampton did. They come away with the turnover. Three by Newborough. That's strong, rebounded by Austin. North, North Butler's done a nice job on the, on the boards, getting a ton of those rebounds here in the second they quarter. They really have, and it makes such a big difference. You've yeah. got to get those rebounds. That one and done is a whole different thing. Austin with the drive, and he's fouled on the way, and he'll get two free throws to try to extend North Butler's lead. This is Ryan Austin, junior, six foot two. First one in and out. Free throw, no good. New Hampton makes wholesale changes here to their lineup with three new bodies coming in. Second free throw is up and good. 18-16, North Butler leads. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go on this one. That's Ewart on the drive, and he's fouled on the way to the basket, and he'll get two. 
So we haven't seen many free throws tonight, and now we're going to get four of them in a span of about six seconds. <laughs> that You're is. the one that said it, man. <laughs> You're the one that said it. <laughs> that is North Butler's fifth foul, so there will every foul will be a shooting foul from here forward, or they get two shots. They're basically in the, in the double bonus, to use old terms, right? From here forward, the Chickasaws will be shooting. Makes one, and it's 17-18. North Butler leads. Ball down on the Oof. court. Does a nice job of coming up with it. North Butler steals it back. <laughs> Stolen again by the Chickasaws. May have had a travel in there. The crowd thought Ewart missed the two ultimately, and North Butler gets the rebound. Frantic pace here in St. Ansgar. <laughs> That's uh, number 14, Ryan Austin. Goes to the hoop and is fouled yet again. So two more from the charity stripe for Ryan Austin. Again, those rebounds on the opposite side of the court are a really big deal for this comeback. That doesn't happen without those rebounds. Yep. He makes the first one. It's at 19-17. Junior Ryan Austin, one more free throw here. It's up, and it's good. So that's a 20-17 lead for the Bearcats. That'll be their biggest North Butler lead of the night after being down nine to start this one. Ewart for three. No good. Misses everything. Hustle play there by Ben Gilbert. Gets the rebound, heads up, spins, and throws it off of a North Butler defender to keep the ball at this end for New Hampton. Great heads up play by that young man. A nice inbound pass there and a play to Dylan Schmidt who lays it up and in. Thorn. Gets the ball down low. It's been the key to North Butler's success here in the second quarter. That's Brady Austin, excuse me, that's Ryan Austin for three, or for, for two down low there. I think that's his fifth point in the last minute of this game. Three for Gilbert's good. And we got a tie game here. Two minutes left to go in St. Ansgar. All tied between New Hampton and North Butler. Both teams are shooting much better here in the last couple of minutes. They sure are. Number 30, again, a really nice pass there from Austin to number 30. He lays it up and in. North Butler retakes the lead. Timeout, New Hampton. Minute 42 to go. New Hampton trails. North Butler, 24-22. Been a good one. Been a really good one. It's been one. a really good one. Yeah. And to see these teams come out here in, in very early preseason, first games, I would dare say. And we know it's going to be a little sloppy. It's going to be sloppy for everybody. You expect it for some from the refs. You expect some yeah. from us up here. <laughs> right. Uh, and the players themselves. But they have really, uh, they, I mean, they look they look pretty sharp for how early it is in the season. Yeah. And I would say coming out here when it goes 9 nothing in the direction of New Hampton, I think, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a really long <laughs> half, but <laughs> yep. North Butler, to their credit, they're getting they're getting the boards, they're getting the ball in the, the hoop, and they somehow have a 24 to 22 yep. lead. Yep, and I, I know New Hampton and North Butler, I'm sure, just, just like our guys, and you know, these are these are athletes that play multiple sports, but they work at every sport year round. And, and it, I think that shows early like this, where eh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good yeah. uh, for most of these guys are six or seven practices into the season, uh, and to be able to to run the offense and, and shoot like they've shot shows that they probably didn't just show up and handle a basketball for you the first it. time this year. You got it. They've, they've been working at this. So New Hampton runs the offense here. Really nice move and a kick out. Three is up and short. I'm going to kick off the iron out of bounds to, New, to North Butler. So... Reed Roush started the game really hot. I think he was two for two from three, and he is, has missed the last couple. 
North Butler looks to take advantage here. The big guy dribbling the ball up the court. I'm sure that's not exactly what the coach had it, had drawn up, but it worked out. You don't think they talked about that at halftime? Huh? I don't the, think so. The, the that's what right they there? talked about is him tearing rebounds or down uh, <laughs> underneath the hoop. He's played really well. Uh, number 14, Ryan Austin here in this second quarter. Oh, it's Booz at the top of the key. Good ball handler. Kicks it down to Austin. Passes it out to Lewis, back to Austin. Gets a really nice look, but a little too strong. Rebounded by the Chickasaws. Three again for Reed, and that one goes. We've got an injury on the court, so they stop it here after the made bucket. The referees stop it, take a look at number 11. He was slow to get up underneath the basket here. So New Hampton takes the lead on that three from Reed Roush. 25-24, 40 seconds remain in this one. So they cannot get the last shot here. There will be four or five seconds left on the clock. Pass down low, great pass. Down to number 30, shoots it up and in. And North Butler retakes the lead 26-25. New Hampton can hold for the last shot here if they'd like to do that. Gilbert's trapped in the corner and the ball's oh, wow. stolen away by number 30, <laughs> but he steps on the line as he gets control of the ball. Out of bounds, the ball will go to New Hampton. So new life for New Hampton. North Butler takes a timeout. They want to talk this one over. With 11.4 seconds to go, New Hampton with the ball, but they trail by one. Have an exciting finish here to this start. This is a really exciting finish to start off the season for these guys. Get a, we'll get we'll get ready for you know for these tight games that we're going to get to call throughout the year. That's the thing about basketball is there's there's often a lot of excitement in the last couple of minutes of high school basketball games. So we'll be ready for it. And if you're looking for your Saints, there they are, getting, getting ready. ready to take the court here at the completion of this one. It would be nice to know some names without looking at numbers. Won't it, it will. It will. <laughs> Just to have them roll off the tongue will be will be very nice. So Gilbert, number two, and number 23, Reed Roush, have kind of been the shooters here in this game for New Hampton. Let's see if they try to get one of those two a good look here. Pass the ball around inside to 14. Great defensive play by North Butler. He was going to have a wide open shot and did not get it. Ball is... Finally corralled by North Butler as time expires and North Butler comes back to beat the Chickasaws 26-25 here in scrimmage number two in St. Ansgar. Pretty wild finish, pretty exciting finish. And that's going to bring us into game number three coming up next between the St. Ansgar, your St. Ansgar Saints versus Claren Goldfield Dowes, who traveled, by the way, an hour and a yeah. half to be here in an hour and a half home. That's a three hour commute. Thank you, Clarion Goldfield Dows, for making the trip to play about 30 minutes of basketball. But you know what, it just, it speaks to the importance of getting these early reps in for these teams. It's worth traveling for three hours to play half an hour because you get a chance to get some real life reps in. Yep. Uh, and we're excited. We're excited to be here in St. Anne's Group broadcasting this free tonight. Uh, thanks for being here. 15 minutes or so from yep. now. And the, the Saints will be will finally be on the court. So we're all warmed up announcer voice wise. And hopefully you're warmed up at home too. You got your popcorn, you're ready for some Saints basketball. To start the 23-24 basketball season. It's kind of the first time 24 starts to creep into my oh, mind is it. basketball season. And the years it's go so December fast in my advancing week or age or here that it's it <laughs> oh, is uh, it's hard to believe. That, uh, that that 24 is, yeah, a month and, what, eight days away or whatever it That's is. It's coming way too fast. That is unbelievable. All right, got any guesses who's going to be home and away this time? I have a feeling the Saints will be home. And, let's and see. the Cowboys, the CGD Cowboys, I believe is what they go by. We will call them Clarion just for brevity's sake. What on about the broadcast oh, tonight? You know what? I can't even put Dows on this thing. You can't even get it, so get it there. We'll just say Cowboys and Saints, shall we? Let's do it. Cowboys and the home team shall be your St. Anne's for Saints.
I wonder if we can take this opportunity to um, we can show the fouls on this on the scoreboard. So if you're just joining us, hey, we've got a new scoreboard here. It's reading the scoreboard in the house. I'll put the camera on that. It's reading that scoreboard right there. And it's got OCR, which is optical character recognition, and then it's creating this beautiful sports graphic that you see down here. So we literally um, have just a random camera pointed at that, and somehow <laughs> the technology can read the scoreboard and trans see, transfer it into a digital number and it there, put yeah. it at the bottom of your screen. So that camera has one job. <laughs> It's amazing. To and me. it's got a it's got a <laughs> wide angle lens on it. For those of you who are interested, it's got a wide angle lens on that camera, and it's reading. Uh, it's wide enough to read both of these scoreboards. So here's a shot clock, which it's reading 36. We just have a weird angle on it, uh, and then this scoreboard, and then putting that data together to provide what you see down below. But I'm going to see if I can get the what do you want fouls on that? Yes. There's really where is it listed? And the it's bottom left and bottom right, those would be the fouls, the team fouls by quarter. Oh, bottom left, bottom right. Okay, yep, okay. the zeros let's, there. Let's see if we can do that. So. So. While you do that, I'm going to go through a couple of things here. As we, obviously, we, we will probably won't see Clarion Goldfield Dallas again. So I thought, oh, let's do a little research and see what they've got. They lost three oh. senior starters from last year's team. So they returned two starters. Uh, but those two starters account for about half their scoring last year. Ooh. So they return a lot of offense from last year. Uh, number three, Carson Nesheim, 309 points last year, hit 52 uh, three-pointers. Wait a minute. Where? Number three, Carson Nesheim. Huh. Number 50, Caden Hankins, started 21 games last year, was their th third leading uh, scorer with 185 points. So they have some offense returning. Uh, and, and it'll be interesting to see what they've got for us tonight. On the Saints side of the basketball court here, uh, you know, a senior-heavy team uh, this year. The Saints lost two seniors uh, to graduation last year. Will Knowlton and Ryan Hackbart, two key pieces that they'll try to replace this year. They returned six guys that played in all 22 games last year. Hey, that would be the there'd be five seniors and a junior who played in all 22 games last year, uh, and one uh, who would be sophomore Joe Clevenger who played in 14 contests last year. So they've got a lot of experience. The Saints return a bunch of guys who have played a lot of basketball uh, over the last year or so. Uh, return almost 80 percent of their points. So 80 percent of the offense returns, 70 percent of their rebounds re return. Uh, obviously, a big chunk of those rebounds were corralled by Mr. Ryan Hackbart. So they're going to have to replace a big man down low. Uh, I would, would guess we're going to do that with a combination of Carson Sparrow, Hunter Hillman, Andrew Powers would be those three forwards down low that, that we'll, we'll look to do that. Hunter, of course, played in that position next to Ryan Hackbart last year. So he's got a year under his belt. I know... Hunter had played a lot of basketball since last year. Uh, he's been involved with uh, some AAU teams and, and done some things, and I'm excited to see what he brings uh, to back to the Saints team here here this year. Complimented, of course, senior point guard Tyke Remster. Kind of all starts with him. I think he's the, the heart and soul of this team in terms of leadership. He's that senior point guard that you need to just drive you forward. We mentioned Carson Sparrow. Uh, who's who's back and fully participating, right, Eric? I think you probably you have bet. as much info on that as anybody. So yes, he is. happy to see Carson. Obviously, he played football uh, not at the quarterback position just because of, of uh, some injuries he was dealing with, but back back here going full for basketball. Happy to see that. Uh, Jay Suisau, uh would be a returning junior. Looks like he's going to get the start tonight uh, on one of the wings. Uh, and then Drew Powers, we'd mentioned him. He'd be the other starter. Go, I would guess would start at that other wing position. Uh, again, played it, played twenty all two twenty in all twenty two games last year. Drew's defense is fun to watch. He's just going to attack and be aggressive. Coming off the bench, you got Max Beeland, who will be, I think, with the first guy off the bench. We'll see tonight. Uh, again, played in all twenty two games last year. Uh, got a lot better defensively, rebound wise. Uh, and we're, we're going to need to see from Mr. Max is that three-point shot go down. When he was hot last year uh, at North Butler, I think he made three three-pointers start the second half and kind of changed that game, and that's the that's what we're going to need to see out of Mr. Max as we go through through this basketball season, more of that. Next up will be Joe Clevenger. I think we'll see him 
uh, as well off the bench right away. Uh, just a big guy, big force down low, uh, who's got pretty good footwork. So we'll, it'll be fun to watch him uh, progress as well. And then you got senior Tyler Girk, junior Tyson Klein, who I think we'll also see action here tonight as we go. Big St. Ansgar basketball squad this year, Eric. I think I heard 28 or 29 guys Ooh. total in the program from oh. freshman to, to senior. So I, I've see, I've got a freshman, so I pay attention to that JJV schedule as well. And I think there's yeah. uh, 10 or 11 of those games. I know you do as well. So I think there's 12. Uh, is there 12 there now? Are now? I believe there are. There are 12 JJV games. That's so, awesome to get those what? guys experience. We talked about in football awesome. and how hard it was to get those guys games. Uh, and it's it's great that in basketball they're going to be able to get those guys on the court as much as possible in those games. We and got then of course, the, you got the full slate of JV games as well. Absolutely. And we got the original schedule. And this is one thing that Coach Squire is really good about. It's And it's, you know, if you're putting the schedule on your calendar, the thing we've learned with Coach Squire is just wait. Just be patient. <laughs> Don't put it on your, in your personal calendar until you get the final answer. Hey, this is my final answer because that's this is what Coach Squire does, and he does it really well. Is he makes sure these kids have the opportunities to play these games. JJV is a great example. We had a, a JJV schedule put out. I put it in my calendar. Uh, many parents did, and then it was like, oh, here's an updated calendar. It was six games now. Like we right, lost. We six lost half games. the games. Yeah, half the games. Well, Coach Squire wasn't going to be okay with that, so uh, he found six more games. We got the final calendar. Okay. Twelve games for JJV. What a great great opportunity for these guys just to play and get better yep i know i talked to jason he was real thankful uh to our ad josh culberson who went out and found a bunch of those games to replace those six that we lost uh to, to get get something back on the schedule so awesome to see those guys working together for betterment of our kids too that's kind of fun to see absolutely takes everybody right pulling yes, on the does. pulling on the rope yes it a couple does. of quick notes for clearing here just as i look through their their lineup they have a six foot four freshman Ooh. Uh, number zero is going to, I assume we will see him tonight. He's down here in the bottom left of, okay, our screen's at the oh, other end, which is yeah, fine. Yeah, no, no problem. Let's talk about these He's guys. shooting threes from this corner here. That's a big freshman, ladies and gentlemen, and he does not look like a freshman uh, either. <laughs> so uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, see what he's got tonight uh, for the Cowboys. Like I said, they return a bunch of scoring from last year with two starters. So it'll be a good test for the Saints here in a scrimmage format to get the season started. Six minutes to go to game time. If you've been watching Nyack basketball, there's Madison Hillman there joining us tonight. The IAACA player of the week she last week. I'm sure I got all those initials <laughs> wrong, right. but you get the point. I'm sure you're right. You're exactly right. <laughs> Just say Anybody who wants to contest Joe, do so in right. the chat. We don't have chat open. I mean, it's open tonight, but I have way too many screens on my tiny <laughs> Let's screen. even look at it. I'm going to see if, <laughs> see if we got any chats. But oh, we got a congrats we got a to Maddie Hillman, who has started her college career off with a bang. By all accounts, like I said, player of the week in their conference here last week. I think she uh, had a double-double uh, in her first game and, and uh, off to a great start. So great to see former Saints doing well at the next level as well. Leon Felter is number zero. That's the big freshman I was talking about. I'm just trying to get my sheet in order here. While you do that, we're going to focus on the Saints getting warmed up over here on the right-hand side of the court. K-A-K-A-C-E-K. -K -A -A -E Let me see. We're going to have a pronunciation contest tonight. Well, the last syllable's got to be check, right? Got to be check. Kakachek? Kakachek. That's what I'm going with. We're going with Kakachek. We'll go Kakachek. All right, number three, Carson Nesheim. We got that one. Carson with an O, which is different than how our Carson Sparrow. Well, that's how we'll know. <laughs> that's how we're going to know which <laughs> Carson we're talking about. That's how we will know. <laughs> uh, number 10 is DeCoster. Ah, I think we just missed a Tyke Remster dunk there, Joe. A dunk attempt or an all the way? <laughs> well, we missed it. How are we, <laughs> we going to know? We missed how it. are we ever going to know? Uh, 
Is Maxwell, here's his three. Maxwell going to show you how it's done. It's tough to hit a three when there's seven balls. There's 17 that basket of them the all floating time. up there. Uh, there's one. There we go. There yeah, we got yeah. two or three. That's good. Keep I tell you, I boys. watched just a little bit of practice last week. I was here for something else, and Tyke or Emster was absolutely unconscious from three point land, like <laughs> over and over and over. like didn't miss. Uh, so I'd like to see that uh, that happen again. Uh, in, in the game setting. And he's one of those guys just gets better, just like in a football field, just gets better at game time. He likes the pressure and likes the gamer atmosphere and kind of feeds off of that. So something to watch here tonight as well. So Duke Scoop says he's he's out there in the Duke sphere and he's, he's saying, I like the color better on this camera than on this one. And, ah, Duke, I'm with you, man. But I got more control on this camera, so we might use this one to get you some better close-ups of the action. We'll kick all your replays off to the better, better color cam, though. And I do have, we'll see if it shows them. I have Team Fouls. Programmed? Supposedly programmed, although it did warn me. Uh, it might mess up your production if you try and add any more to this little <laughs> score. So it was, we'll do not try to put <laughs> any may, more in I here. I may. We're, we're pushing it. But <laughs> I love if it. this were regular season, I might I might be a little nervous. But this is preseason. What we got nothing to lose, That's right? That's right. That's right. What do we What do we have? Six or seven viewers anyway. And <laughs> push ourselves to fill 49. 49. Joe, give us some oh credit. my 49. gosh! <laughs> I love it. That's the subscribers who got notified that we went live. Probably I were like, Hey, what like is this? It. It's not basketball season I yet. I like it. I like it. You know what? We got two and a half minutes. Let's let's give people an opportunity. What is hey? What the heck is that little QR code at the bottom? Well, let me tell you, Sparrow's going begging again. <laughs> we have partnered with with Give Butter to keep this stream free, and not just keep this stream free. It's it's more about just supporting the athletics that you want to watch, you want to be here, and it does cost. Gosh, conferences eight bucks a game this year. Uh, so if, if you want to donate, if you're feeling grateful for being able to be at home and watch this game, and we're going to see more of it during the winter months when things get really cold and maybe not the best traveling weather, uh, please consider donating to St. CV. Keep this straight stream free. Not only that, but help us pay for referees and new uniforms. Keep these boys looking sharp. Uh, many, many of you have donated so far. Thank you for your generous contributions. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. So thanks Where for does here. that money go other than to pay my lucrative salary? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding about that part. Yeah, Where does that money go? Can you talk to that, Eric? What, what's yeah. going to happen so with that? So this is all very new for us this year. It's a great question, Joe. It's it's all new for us this year. So where does that money go? And the reality is it's all coming so far, at least from Saints Athletics. So uh, Saints TV obviously has some equipment to purchase, and we've done all that already. So it's, uh, um, you know, just from from some loans from local business, from a local business, which I happen to own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you happen to know but, the, know but, them well, right? But yeah, but some of that equipment, you know, the Saints program needs to to own that in order to do this right. And you the bet. kids are part of the process too through the Saint Andrew Stream team. Uh, but right now, the funds are being accumulated, and they will be given to the athletic department in one form or another. So we will give to Saints Athletics. Uh, we will give donate the proceeds to. Uh, I'll say the the extra proceeds beyond the cost of doing what we're doing, and again. To, be, to clarify, we are not making a dime right. on this. We just love doing it and providing something that's viable to those who need it. And that's our goal is to, to make the game, uh, bring the game to those who are unable to cheer from the stands. Um, yep. So right now we're still figuring out the details of how we're going to allocate the money. But 100% of the funds will be distributed to Saints Athletics, Saints Booster Club yep. uh, for sure. And that, that's the key in my mind is that those, those dollars stay here, benefit uh, kids in our community. You got it. All right. We're about to go get underway here in St. Ansgar for the final game of the Jamboree. So the format here, if you're just joining us, is two quarters of basketball. We'll, we'll be a short break in between quarters, normal timing rules, all of that. Two starters for your Saints, Hunter Hillman, Carson Sparrow, Drew Powers, Tyke Remster, and Jay Schwiesel. Hunter in to take the tip. He'll, he'll be doing that a lot this year. Oh, to I bet he try will. Try to battle for that. And it is won by the Saints and Hunter Hillman. Tyke Remster brings the ball up the court. Brings it off to Sparrow. Surveys court, pass to Schwiesel. Schwiesel off his leg and out of bounds. 
Turnover for the Saints. It'll be Cowboys ball. Nice long pass up by the Cowboys to start this one and kick it back out. Think better of it. Ty Remster with good defense. Knocks the ball away. Kicks out of bounds off a of Saint. And it'll remain with Clarion. Nesheim inbounds here to Moore. Up to Morco. Also just a freshman. That number four is also a freshman. He drives in, gets a shot off, but Hunter Hillman denies and Ooh. gets the rebound. He makes the rebound look easy, doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> Tyke Remster drives up the lane, kicks out to Drew Powers for three. Just a little strong. Uh, the ball is kicked around, rebounded ultimately by Drew Powers. So the Saints do a good job of getting the ball back. Tyke drives in, creates a foul for himself. Good job there by Tyke. Driving, was going to try to drive around that guy. He shifted in front of him, gets called for the foul. That's Morical, his first foul of the night. First foul for Clarion. Remster passes into Hillman. Hillman up and in. Hunter Hillman for two. And the Saints lead 2-0. They strike first. Hunter with a really nice move there. The no doubter to get that ball inside for the easy two. I think we'll see a lot of that this year, Joe. I sure hope so. I love watching that play. So that's 14 up and in for more. Good defense by Schwiesau and Hillman. They were both there, but they're called for the foul. I think they're going to give that one to Hillman. It's a foul to be taller or be the tallest guy is often the guy they're going to tag with that. And they do in that case. The free throw is missed. Hillman with the rebound. Sparrow brings the ball up the right side of the court. Drives in, finger rolled, no good. Rebound to Clarion. It's Nessheim with the rebound. Kicks it out to Morico. Back to Nessheim. Schwiesel with the pressure there. Good defense by the Saints. Force up a shot. It's no good. Sparrow with a rebound. Swings it to Powers. Over to Remster. Into Hillman, who's immediately double teamed and fouled. It's a foul on Nesheim, I believe, is who'll get that one. They give, the, give that foul to 52, who is not on my stat sheet, not on my roster sheet. Inbounded to Remster, back to Sparrow, shoots, misses, but it's rebounded nicely by Suisau, kicks it back out to Sparrow for three. Just long, rebounded by Remster. Another Saints rebound. He looks to feed the ball inside to Powers, who was going the other way. Turnover Saints. Yeah, definitely looked good to see the Saints in position to get those rebounds there. Yep. Unfortunately, no points on that, but yep. uh, good very job. promising. Yep, exactly. All right. Claren runs their offense here. Turnover on Claren. Unforced error there by the freshman as he throws it out of bounds. So the Saints with the ball. Tie game 2-2. Sparrow runs the offense here. Over to Suisau. Sparrow thinks about a three. Instead brings it down, passes it over to Ramster, who drives in, kicks over to Hillman. Hillman with a no-look pass to Sparrow for Oof. three. Misses everything. <laughs> still, finding our, still finding our shot. That's yep. all right. You got that. That's why we play these games, right? That's why we play these games. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> rebound kicks to Clarion, who is fouled. Drew Powers commits a foul there on the rebound, and he'll take a seat as Max come, Max Bielen comes in for him. So first substitution tonight for the Saints. Is number 21, Max Bieland on the court. Clarion's running a bunch of that screen down play. And the coach is not happy that they've missed it a couple of times. Errant three, but rebounded nicely 
by Nesheim, who puts it up and in for two. To Remster, Sparrow over to Suisau. Out to Remster for three. Good. Oh, that looks good. Tyke Remster hits his first three-pointer of the year, and it's 5-4 Saints. Good passing there, creates an open look, and Remster buries it. This is a freshman here, Morical is number four, good player. Passes it off to 52. Shot's no good, but gets his own rebound and puts it up and in. 6-5, Clarion leads. Remster to Beeland. Back to Sparrow at the top, who drives, lays it up and in. Good move by Carson Sparrow, and the Saints retank the lead. A little bit modified uh, Euro step there. <laughs> Maybe took yep. a couple extra little steps. I don't know. Uh, I'll be anxious. To, anxious it'll be, to it'll talk be fun to see that. that. <laughs> exactly. Get a little direct feedback from that one. Yeah. I'm so. sure he'll tell me I was wrong. These uh, old eyes don't work the way they used That's to. right. That's right. <laughs> Saints are in his own defense here. Shots up, rebounded by Carson Sparrow. To Hillman that's in the lane. Horace Suisau back to Beeland. Into Hunter, and Hunter's fouled by 52. That's what we need. Get those entry passes in to the big guys. Starts with Hunter, I believe, in this offense down low. And he's going to draw a ton of those fouls Absolutely. by guys trying to deny that pass. That's two of them already on 52 tonight on that exact play. And Joe Clevenger checks into the game for Jay Suisau. And Hunter checks out. And I believe uh, Drew Powers back in. Sparrow. Drives. Somebody thought he took an extra step in the crowd, but I didn't see it. No. Back down low where it is corralled by Drew Powers, who lays it up and in for two. Drew's in the right spot at the right time right there. Smartly takes it right to the hoop. And the Saints take a 9-6 lead. And Drew will tell you he's been working on those short shots like that. You know, if you, if you remember the junior high game, yep. we watched Drew, a lot of times he'd miss those. He'd get pretty excited about it, grabbing it, try to yep. get in the basket a little too quick, overshoot it. But he's become really reliable down under the hoop. Sparrow gets the rebound, brings it back up into Drew Powers, who gets tied up underneath and turns it over to the Cowboys. At first he was trying to drive the baseline there and get it out to Max in the corner and just got bottled up. And I should have thought that was a foul to Drew's face. I, I thought it, it could have been as well. A lot of contact underneath there on that one. Drew just a little too aggressive again underneath. That's Lindemann receiving that pass, and Drew's all over him for a second foul. Got to be smart there and just not get him with the body as he goes underneath. You can defend him and play hard without fouling him. That's that's the hard part, though. <laughs> uh, yep. And that, yeah, that's, that's again, a good. get that out of your system. Learn it tonight, right? Get that, uh, get that going and feel what that feels like and, and be ready to go. When it starts for real next week. So somebody gets lost defensively there. Easy two for the Cowboys. Tyke Ramster brings the ball up. Over to Carson. Down to Joe Clevenger. Back out to Beeland. Passes it down. Good job moving the ball by the Saints. This is Remster. Oof. Good move by Remster, but blocked nicely there by Clarion. Yeah, I think Tyke knew he was in trouble as soon as he went up with that and had that big guy in his face, but he yep. did what he could, got the ball yep. out. There we go. There's a good, good job by Drew there defensively. Gets the block. Looks like they're going to call that out of one sure where that was going to go. Loose ball, fought for on the ground. Ruled it was out of bounds off of Clarion before Max got to it, so it'll be Saints ball. Tyson Klein in for the Saints. Jay Suisau back in, Hunter Hillman back in. So our lineup looks like this. We've got Powers, Hillman, Klein, Suisau, and Remster on the court for the Saints. Got some confusion here. 
Yeah, it looks like they got it straightened out. Schwiesel brings the ball up the court, passes it into Hillman. Back to Jace, over to Klein. The powers. Remster drives around a guy. Comes back, brings the ball back out to Hillman. Nice pass by Hillman into Schwiesel, who's fouled. Good pass by the big fella there. So that's the fourth foul of the quarter for Clarion. Run the inbound set here to Powers, who thinks about a three. Brings it down, passes it to Hillman. Oof. Hillman drives the lane. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Hillman nearly had a dunk there. Uh, instead, he falls out of bounds and catches the ball. <laughs> Very smartly tries to get it back in, but uh, I don't think that's going to work. I think the uh, official recognized that he was out of bounds. But. <laughs> yep. Uh, exactly. Uh, but, you know, it's worth a shot. You never know. Uh, you know uh, what? If, if there were style points, we'd get one for that. Yeah. Good defense by Hillman there. Blocks the ball out, but it's off a of Saint. Carson Sparrow checks back into the game. Nine, eight Saints here. 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Good pass inside. Good defense by Jay Schwiesau. Knocks it away and gets the steal. Well-designed play, but the Saints were there. We're right there, you bet. Carson Sparrow. Passes it inside, it's tipped away and knocked out of bounds, so it'll remain St. Ansgar ball. There's a four and a half second differential here on the clock, so the Saints will not be able to eat the quarter here. Ramster over to Suisau. Suisau takes it to the hoop. He gets fouled hard, knocked down, and he'll go to the line for two. So Suisau with the opportunity to give the Saints a three-point lead here at the end of the first quarter. First one's up, and it's good. Max Beeland checks back in for Remster. So we got Klein, Beeland, Schwiesau, Sparrow, and Hillman is your lineup for the Saints as they wind down the clock here in the, second, or in the first quarter. Schwiesel has one more free throw coming here. Just a little strong, rebounded by the Cowboys. Good help defense there by Schwiesel to stop the penetration. Shots missed, but rebounded nicely by a guy under the basket who lays it up and in for two. Looked like a pass. I'm not sure that's how it was designed. Well, Belen drives, tries to make a pass, <laughs> and it is blocked out of bounds, deflected out of bounds, I guess. So nine tenths of a second to go here in the first quarter. Sparrow's going to inbound it. Feels like there's only one play, Ali. There's one play right here. It's coming. Good job <laughs> to get it in. <laughs> Max corrals it and throws it somewhere near the basket. No good. It is 10-10 at the end of one here. So good quarter for the Saints to start. Uh, great quarter, great quarter for yeah. Get 10-10. Uh, get get those cobwebs out first quarter. Let's see what happens here in the second quarter. How, let's let's just test your memory a little bit. If you're just joining us, uh, this is the third game of the night, Joe. This is the third game. <laughs> here we go. Night. <laughs> so what happened? What was the first game? The first game was Riceville versus Rockford. Riceville versus Rockford to start. Yep, exactly. Do you remember the score? Uh, remember the winner? I, I don't that. remember the score, but I do know Riceville. <laughs> Uh, won that one fairly handily. Uh, they they played really well in the second quarter, especially, and, and ran away with that one. Then we had a thriller in the second one uh, where New Hampton took a 9 nothing lead, uh, but and North Butler spent the rest of the game kind of scratching back into it. I think took their first lead with two minutes to go yep. in the second quarter and, and ended up winning that one uh, by, was it just one? Did it end up being one just point. a one-point point point differential one point at the end? Yep. And, uh, and uh, New Hampton had that ball at the end of that one with a chance to score and win the game, but uh, yep. ended up going uh, North Butler's way. So, so defensively, oh, go ahead. So I was going to take just a quick moment here. Thanks uh, to FSB and Grand Millers for getting these kids into the game for free. That's really, really generous contributions from these two organizations that made watching Saints at home live totally free. 
All right, Joe, what's all you? All right, back to the action here. We got Remster, Sparrow, Schwiesau, Hillman, and Powers for the Saints. The original starting five back on the court here. I think there was probably a little talk about too many wide open layups for the Cowboys there uh, underneath the basket. So we're going to clean that up here in the second half. Great start. Remster is going up for the rebound, gets fouled. So it'll be Saints ball. The second foul on number four, Moracle, for the Cowboys. Remster brings the ball up, passes it on to Sparrow. Looks for Hillman down low. He's covered up, so wisely kicks it out to Schwiesau. Oh, back to Sparrow for three. Oh, there you go. Got it. <laughs> That's Carson for. Sparrow for three makes it 13-10 Saints. This is Moore. Over to Lane. Ah, good play. Down low again. That's Moracle with the two. Saints are going to have to figure that one out. Good offensive play, and it's worked worked well for the Cowboys tonight. Sparrow tries three again, just short. Clearing with the rebound. Saints lead by one. Good defense by Sparrow. I think coaches wanted him to jump on in there, right? Once you get him to pick up his dribble, then let's go get in his face. Oof. <laughs> So the three-pointer rims out for Moore. I thought that thing was most of the way down. Comes out, and then there's a foul on the rebound. So I uh, didn't, you see who they gave that to, Spare? I don't see it up uh, on it the board. It looked like Drew was over the back on that Got one. It. I assume it went to Drew. Yep, looks like it. He's coming out. That would be his third, I believe. So Bielan checks in for, for Powers. That three-pointer, it was like all the way in the <laughs> cylinder like and it, somehow it? came out. That one does not. Carson Nesheim for three. And Clarion takes the lead, 15-13. Beeland to Sparrow, into Hillman. Hillman turns, takes one dribble, Oof. gets a nice shot. That's a good look. The coaches are going to tell him, keep taking those shots. Yeah, we will take those looks. They will fall. But that one does not. A travel on the Cowboys. 52 doesn't like it, but that's what you call travel in basketball, and it'll be St. Ansgar ball. Yeah, that shot by Hillman, is, uh, it's a 90 percenter. We just <laughs> happened to look at the yep. one out of 10 that didn't go. You got it. You got it. Keep shooting that shot, young man. Bramster to Beeland. Beeland over to Schwiesau. Schwiesau to Sparrow. Nice passing by the Saints. Sparrow drives it up. Mm. Gets a nice shot off, doesn't go in. Hillman with there the rebound, go. up and good. <laughs> Hillman with a nice rebound and a putback, and it's a tie game. Well played by the big boy under the basket. Yep, that's that makes all the difference in the world to have a guy who can just vacuum those rebounds up and go right back to the hoop with him. Second chance points have been big for the Saints and will be a big factor this year. Another travel by Clarion. That'll be a turnover, Saints ball. Ramster will bring it up for your Saints. Clearing coach didn't like that one. Neither did the kid number three who was <laughs> accused of. <laughs> accused travel. of said travel. <laughs> yep. uh, Remster <laughs> drives around a defender and is fouled on his way to the basket. So that's foul number two on Clearing in this quarter. Fouls reset every quarter now in high school basketball, both boys and girls. Schwiesau to Beeland. Beeland over to Sparrow. Hillman at the elbow. Wow. And he travels. Whew. Travel on Hunter Hillman. I don't think he liked that one. Nope. <laughs> Everybody's getting used to this yet. Oh, yeah, that's right. Those little squeaks, those little movements uh, become turnovers in, in basketball in a hurry. So the Saints turn it over. Clearing goes back to work on the offensive end. Zone defense for the Saints here. 15-15 game here and a game that's only going two quarters long. Hillman with a nice rebound on the miss to Remster who drives in, takes a shot, no good, rebounded by Clarion. Nesheim brings the ball up. Go, go, go. 
Good defense by Remster and Schwiesau there. Shots up, no good, but rebounded by Clarion. Second chance Oof. points for Clarion there as Chaz Lane hits the three-pointer. Clarion with their biggest lead of the night, 18-15. Remster looks to run the offense here, takes a shot, and it's good. Little 18-footer goes for Remster, and it's 17-18 here. Saints look to get back in this thing. Nesheim, short, rebounded by Hillman. Kicks it forward to Remster, over to Suisa, who lays it up and in. Suisau spins up on the dirt, <laughs> gets himself up, and nearly gets a steal uh, on the coming up. Remster a little too aggressive on the reach there, going to get called for the foul. Powers and Clevenger check back in. Suisau and Beelan to the bench. Good set for both of those two right there. Well, for three, a little long. Kicks off of Carson Sparrow and out of bounds. So it'll be clearing ball here. They're down one, three minutes, 22 seconds to go. Inbound by Nesheim. Down low to the big fella who shoots it up and in. But a little excessive celebration at the end causes a technical foul here on number 52. You could celebrate, but you can't do that. So <laughs> Remster, you know what I missed? I missed yeah, what I a little. I think in in the NFL they would they would call it taunting, I believe, or in right. football that's what they would call it. Here it's just a technical foul. Remster takes the technical free throws, makes the first one. Yeah, Pierce doesn't have time for that. Does he, he does he's, not have he's time pretty, for that. He's going he's gonna to call that every time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so Remster makes both, and the Saints will retain possession after the technical foul. Clarion smartly, I think, calls a timeout, get their guys calmed down, get this thing back under <laughs> where they want it. Uh, the Saints will have the ball coming out of the timeout here with a one-point lead, three minutes, 14 seconds to go. With that, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Agent Brian Putney with offices in St. Ansgar and Stacyville, Iowa. We embrace a holistic approach to crop production, focusing on soil, seed, and plant health. K2 Agronomy, helping our customers to achieve the maximum return on their investment. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Canine Cabin Kenneling and Pet Services in Stacyville, Iowa. Focus Insurance Team's experienced agents understand the unique risks and needs of the agricultural community. They offer competitive rates and comprehensive coverage to protect your farm, equipment, crops, and livestock. Choose Focus Insurance for reliable service, market expertise, and peace of mind. Back here in St. Ansgar, it's Remster who sets up the offense here. The Saints leading by one. Powers. Good defense by Clarion, forces the turnover. A lot of contact there, but it's ruled a turnover for the Saints. And if you're just joining us, this has been a pretty neck and neck game the entire way where St. Ansgar was just had their their largest deficit of three. They were down 15 to 18. And now the Saints are up 21-20. Good defense by Drew Powers there. That's what he does so well is just gets a hand on that pass as it's going across court. The Cowboys are able to corral it. Hunter Hillman with good defense and a rebound there. Spare to Remster. Remster over to Clevenger. Sparrow was looking to pass it into Hillman. It's tipped and a turnover for the Saints. 
Messheim. To Moracle. Passes it over to Lane. Off of Sparrow and out of bounds there. Looked like that was just no place to go, so he just kind of threw it off his foot there. And out of bounds it goes. Timeout, Saints. So the Saints are going to make a couple of changes here, but before that, they look like we're going to get a timeout and talk this one over. The Saints lead by one, two minutes, 12 seconds to go. I like the timeout. My coaches, Squire and Klein, co-head coaches here for the Saints, Eric Klein and Jason Squire, do a nice job there of calling timeout of let's make this a game-like situation. It's fourth quarter in a game, you know, conference yeah. game that matters in three weeks, two minutes to go. We, oh, we've man. got... Got the ball and the lead. What what's this look like? Let's talk about it, right? This is a I love the situational aspect oh, of this. Of use the scrimmage to the best, you know, the best of your ability to, to make it as game like as we can. Yeah, no one's going to bring the best game of the year here. You hope not. You know, first yep. game, first scrimmage of the season. Right. So let's learn. Everything let's get we a rep in here. Of yeah, what would this be like if this was this was a you know, like I said, a conference game in three weeks? How how do we do that? Saints defense has been good tonight. The perimeter defense especially. That's just a heck of a good shot by Nessheim. Pulls up, pretty tough to defend that. If that's going to go in, it's pretty tough to stop. Been a physical game here. Remster bumping out front to Beeland, over to Hillman. Back to Remster. Sparrow thinks about a three, but instead passes it out to Suisau. Over to Beeland, who throws it into Hillman. Hillman's fouled immediately by 52, who apparently has never fouled anybody in his life, but he has three times tonight uh, been called there. Uh, he just <laughs> That's four times, excuse me. Just I forgot he had technical, too. Just wraps him up right as the ball comes in there, and they're going to call that every time uh, when you, you wrap your arms around his body as the ball comes in. So he's going to take a seat. That's four fouls in this quarter. Inbound to Schwiesau. Gets a shot up, but it's short and rebounded by Clarion. Good defense by Schwiesau. Almost gets the steal there. Blocked by Hillman underneath. Hunter Hillman with his first block of the night. Good attempt there. And a good save. By Remster, who takes the three in the corner. Short, rebounded by the Cowboys. Well, the Saints are hanging in there defensively, giving it all they got. Hillman comes over to help defense. He saves the ball, but right back into a, a Cowboy player. Goes out of bounds, off black, and it'll be Saints ball. Just you can tell everybody's kind of getting those nerves out. Those loose ball feels just don't feel just quite right yet. <laughs> so. I know they don't. And this is the game, right? Yeah, it's, right? It's the second quarter here, but this is really this the second is, half. This is going to be the end. Each yep. quarter so. equals a half tonight during this scrimmage. So the shot you clock bet. is just a second off. Sparrow for two, and the Saints have the lead. 23-22, St. Ansgar. 18 ticks left in this one. Clarion brings the ball up. Going to try to set up the offense for a look right at the end of the clock here. Eight seconds to go. Saints defense tries to hold. Shot is up, and it is no good. Wow. No good on the shot at the buzzer, and the Saints win this one 23-22. Fun one. What really an fun epic one. Finish for you both of see these teams. That ball hit the rim. I thought I had a chance of going in. I thought I was going to drop in. Let's take a look at that. This is the last shot. You can see. It looks like it's going to drop straight Beeland. into that basket, but it's. Beeland and Hillman are both there, and he gets that <laughs> shot way up on an arc over top of both of them. Uh, it has a pretty nice touch, and that. that uh, that's Chaz Lane, who had hit a couple of, of those throughout the night, but that one doesn't go on your Saints hang on and win 23-22. So I think we saw a lot of good things out of, the, out of the Saints tonight. Defensively, I thought they played really well in that first quarter. Uh, offensively, worked some kinks out, gets, uh, 
get some of those looks. I think we've got a lot. Get that ball down low to 22 is going to be a key for the Saints and their success this year as we see, uh, you know, see that kind of come and develop. And if nothing else, he's going to draw a ton of fouls underneath there. And uh, we, we talked about he missed a couple of those shots that, that are going to normally go down, and that will make a big difference in this game. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Great to get this first one under our belt. Uh, really. Yeah. Uh, what, so next week we start. It's a week from tonight. Week right? from so tonight. Yep, St. Andrew plays Central Springs. And that game is here. That game is here. Yep. So we will broadcast, Eric. We're going to broadcast the boys and the girls. Uh, so we will we'll start. We'll get we'll get times out on Facebook and, and any place that we can in terms of when we're going to start broadcasts and do all that. But we're going to try to broadcast as many games as we can uh, for both boys and girls basketball here this winter. We've been told that there's already there's already two schools we know about that we will not be able to broadcast that. So check your calendar uh, when the boys, for, well, the, when the boys and girls, when we play at Nashville, we will not be able to broadcast that game. Uh, Nashville has rules in place that don't allow that. There will, they, I believe they'll have a radio broadcast, but uh, the best yep. thing to do is go to Nashville, come or Nashville, come see that game. Uh, yep. Same is true in in uh, Cresco. Cresco is, uh, also has a policy that says, hey, we stream our own games. You're not allowed to stream here. That's yeah. okay. We respect that. We, we wish we could, uh, yeah. but uh, we will always be streaming our home games. Thank you, sir. We got uh, Zach Attack, the the Zach of all trades is here. Hello. <laughs> What's going on? We got a visitor here. And the visitor, oh, wait, we got to look for the headphone thing. So you know what? I th what else we got to talk about? I is think that, that's it. Think we'll so. see you next week. We'll if, do this again. If you can get to games, again, I guess we'll put our plug in for that. Get to games if you can. Uh, kids love to see you in the stands. If you can get here, please do that. If you can't, join us on Saints TV. You got it. And the score is not accurate. The scoreboard's actually off right now. So, that's, that's <laughs> so one. it's trying to pick up a 9 and a 4. <laughs> Saints it. win 23-22. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you Tuesday night.